الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for making the effort to, uh, to attend today's lecture and I do pray to Allah Azza wa Jalla will be of benefit to all of us inshallah as we are now on the last 10 days, the last 10 nights and day as I said to you the other day, the day before, me and my the other, other Imam, that the race is on. And the treasure is so effective, so precious, so wealthy. It's not a joke. So what we are now trying to achieve, trying to hand, try to grab, try to earn and win, is something preciously uh, quite very, very interesting. So Ikhwan, when we speak about Laylat al-Qadr in two different places, in two different places, Allah Azza wa Jalla referred to Laylat al-Qadr as Layla Mubaraka. This is from the Quran. In Surah Al-Dukhan, is a chapter titled The Smoke. The very, very uh, the first verse of this uh, chapter, Allah Azza wa Jalla referred Laylat al-Qadr in في ليلة مباركة إن أزلناه في ليلة مباركة مباركة is the, مباركة بركة is something to do with the divine blessings and it's not just بباركة specified in one particular thing it is a broad meaning of بركة بركة in the, the whole life benevolence, security, peace, harmony بركة in food, بركة in the lifespan, بركة in person's health, بركة is person's wealth, بركة in knowledge, بركة is, is, is really is the list that goes on and on and on, and all these are بركة. إخواني, this is what we need today. We have plenty of things, yeah? But we are dearly lacking something called بركة. بركة will actually impact the little. If we have little, if we have a small money, Allah Azza wa Jalla, you have a barak on that money, Allah Azza wa Jalla, that money will be, inshallah, it's like you have plenty. You have, you have like, what, well, plenty of money. Barakah in person's life, barakah in person's time, barakah in person's words, endeavors, and efforts. Okay? So there are basically so many prophetic du'as where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended all of us to seek this barakah. So when a barakah is the halat in barakah of his jayin, zadatu, zadatu. So whenever a barakah will actually be present in anything, in anything, that thing will be divinely actually uh, good and beneficial. Let me give you an example. Because today, because today people are complaining, oh, brother, I tell you, I can't do it because I don't have time. You know, I'm busy, 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 busy. You know what, we're busy. I'm not going to say just because we don't have baraka, but part of the whole equation, part of the whole problem is that the baraka is needed, it's lacked. So we wake up in the morning having a list of things and to accomplish during the day. I have to see my GP, I have to go to the council, and I have to do this, I have to see my wife, I have to, to do shopping, and the list goes on and on and on. Somebody who's got baraka in his time, he will fulfill all of this, inshallah, and plenty left. Does it make sense? Because there is a baraka. Why? Because this person is also mindful of Allah Azza wa Jalla's boundaries. He is a mutaqi, he observes Allah's time of obligation, of, of uh, religious obligations. He is, mashallah, he's a, a man of God and he is a good man. That's why Allah Azza wa Jalla had granted him such a barakah in his life, lifetime. Barakah in his umr, barakah in his kids, barakah in his blessings. So, what has to do this with Laylatul Qadr? This is what Laylatul Qadr is. Laylat al-Qadr is not just one night where you're going to do, be there in Atikaf or come to the masjid or be there with that. And it is, it is the outcome of Laylat al-Qadr, and I hope you are listening to this. Very, very important. The outcome of Laylat al-Qadr. One night, but it will impact one year. One year. It will affect one year from your lifespan. I'm going to try to touch, touch, touch into that, inshallah, bi Now, in Surah Al-Dukhan, Allah Azza wa Jalla referred Layla Al-Qadr as Layla Mubaraka. Layla Mubaraka. And another, another place Allah Azza wa Jalla referred in the third verse of Surah Destiny or the Night of Power or the Power, Layla Al-Qadr. Surah, surah, surah Al-Qadr. In the third verse Allah says, Layla Al-Qadr. 
Look at this, subhanAllah, it's amazing. Laylatul Qadri khayrun min alfi shahr. Not equal. Now to put that into perspective, a thousand months, which is alfu shahrin, khayrun min alfi shahrin, thousand months equal to 83 years and three months. You know, this, 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 this uh, period of time, 83 years and three months, that is longer than the, the average lifespan of a person today. Look at the person today's lifespan, 80, 80. If he's lucky, he's going to go beyond 75, 70. This is the ages or the lifespan of the Prophet's community. The Prophet's Ummah are, all, are between that, that interval of, of, of years. 70, 75. Very rare is going to exceed such an uh, age. If he looks after his body, mashallah, and he's healthy, and he is mindful, and he is, mashallah, uh, serious about keeping shape and that, he's going to go beyond that. But the Amar of the Ummah, now forget about this. Allah Azza wa Jalla offered you a chance, a chance, even if you can, your lifespan is less. It's not that long. Allah has given you a chance to recover, to recover, to win something. That's, that's we call it in the modern language, jackpot. But not in haram. <laughs> talking about the lottery and then there was haram and devil, devil actions. We're not talking about, we're talking about the jackpot. That's the jackpot of Layla al Qadr. 83 years now. If we speak about money today, 83 million years, I tell you what, this masjid, not in night time, from Fajr, from Fajr, I'm, I'm serious. From Fajr till Fajr, I don't think you will even find the place to put your shoes. 83 years, million, man. Are you killing me? Allah said, okay, I'm giving you more than that if you only, if you only know. Today, to, people today are crazy about money. Allah said, okay, look about my money is nothing. A glimpse of things, tiny things, a fraction of tiny, tiny, tiny things. I'm giving you a life. And an entire life of reward. One night, Ikhwan, I'm asking you, who on earth has the ability, has the power to give you such an offer, such a gift? It's a gift. Ramadan was before, Layla Qadr never was before in the previous communities and their prophets. Never, ever, ever. Fasting as an institution, they were Isa, Musa, Ibrahim, they used to fast. But Ramadan, as, as it is now, and Laylat al-Qadr, which is the hidden night, which is plenty of reward, and, 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 and glory, and power, and blessings, as, as I've spoken about, is only for this nation. Say, Alhamdulillah, we have to be thankful to Allah, Azza wa Jalla. We are a honored community. We are an honored nation. Laylat al-Qadr, subhanAllah al -Azim. The, 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 the tremendous uh, rewards actually far outweigh the act of worship of our lifetime. This is how it works. Now let me share with you the background, the, the, the origin from where Laylatul Qadr, from where this Laylatul Qadr and, 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 and the, 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 the glory and the, the, the preciousness of Laylatul Qadr came from. Now, it is a narration um, related to Ibn Jarir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In this narration, there is a information that was been given for all of us to understand the reason and the tarikh and history behind Laylat al-Qadr. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to the companion, a man from among the children of Israel. And this man was outstandingly amazing in the way he used to do things between him and Allah Azza wa Jalla. So this man, he liked to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla, okay, at night and from, from, from the night till morning. While during the day, he fought against the enemies of Allah. Can you just imagine for how long? A thousand months, which is 83 years. This is how he lived his life. This man from Bani Israel. Can you just imagine somebody like this? Not from this ummah, from the community of Bani Israel. Okay? When the Prophet mentioned that to the companions, they were amazed and moved. 
So the Allah said, I am in this man of God, I've got everything. I have taken every, all the reward. Now, what are we without 60, 70 years of, 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 of lifetime? Well, what are we going to do? But they had the Sahaba. And when Allah has said, Allah knows the concern, and now they, they were envious. And in very good, in very good way, because they want to really win and do and have and gain the rewards as as this man, Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because of this, because he wants to make his prophet happy and also satisfy prophet's companion, and this is why Allah Azza wa Jalla has revealed this night night of Laylatul Qadr. The reward of Laylatul Qadr will exceed, will even better the reward of what this man from Bani Israel did. And if you look at it, Ikhwani, what makes, what makes Laylat al-Qadr so glorious and majestic, so important, so important is why? Because the Quran was revealed, the Quran, the revelation of the Quran Karim began on the night of Laylat al-Qadr. In what way? In Laylat al-Qadr, which is the odd, the odd uh, number, night during the last 10 days or 10 nights of Ramadan. I'm going to, inshallah, speak about that quite short, inshallah. So the Quran was revealed on the night of, on the night of Laylat al Qadr. In what way? A Quran came down from Allah's preserved tablet, from Allah's knowledge, from Allah's Lawah al Ma'fur, into the heaven of the world, which is Al Bayt al Ma'mur as a complete book on what night <laughs> laylatul qadr and the heaven of the world al bayt al ma'mur there is a there is a hadith speaks about the bayt al ma'mur that bayt is a station is, is 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 a location is a place where every single day a malaika 70000 malaika will circulate around that bayt that house every single day Yesterday, the today, and tomorrow, till Allah inherit the heaven and the earth. Now, how many angels do Allah have? Every single day, new 70,000 angels will do tawaf on that Bayt al Ma'mur. It's a sacred place. So, on Laylat al Qadr, B23, 27, on Laylat al Qadr, in specific, Quran came down, was, 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 was actually came down as, as a complete book into uh, the heaven of the world. And from there, from there, actually, after that, Quran was revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All of you are, are aware of this through Jibril alayhi salam, yeah, by stages, by stages based on the event and the people's people's benefit, need, and situations. So I want to connect you with what I say. Quran Karim was revealed on the night of Qadr on the Bayt al Ma'mur, and from the Bayt al Ma'mur, the Quran was revealed chapters, paragraphs. Part verses and surahs, and the and, and the and the and the length of how many years? Twenty three. Twenty three years, from al into uh, 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 into al bayt al ma'mur, from that time into the prophet's heart through Jibril alayhi salam, twenty three years laws, rules, etiquette. Um, the worship of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the halal, the haram, stories of the prophets and their previous co co communities, all in one go. It came in the course of 23 years, according to the prophets, the, sorry, the people's need and, 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 and benefit and situation clarification. But the Quran as a full book was actually descended and came down from Allah's preserved tablet on the night of Al-Qadr. So on the night of Al-Qadr, Ikhwani, there are actually mighty things take place. Allah Azza wa Jalla, who is the manager and the enforcer of the ordinance for the next year, he appointed the angel in charge of the administration to fulfill Allah's destiny, to fulfill Allah's decision in a person's life, death, age, well-being, family, provision, sustenance, wealth. قال الله عز وجل on that night فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم. Every wise decision is decided on that night. 
So every single person, A, B, C, D, the Malaika, whom Allah Azza wa Jalla had handed the duty to fulfill, okay, and to enforce, to enforce and to uh, decide on a person's life. This person is going to pass away this year. The other one is going to be promoted. The other one is going to have something will happen to him. And, and, and as I said to you, in general, in well-being, person's well-being, in his need, in his wealth, in his health, in his rest, in his age, and everything. So this is what, why the, uh, and subhanAllah, and we, the Ummah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are honored. We are honored on this night, because the Malaika descend. This is what, later to, this is what the Surah Al-Qadr actually speaks about. The visit of Malaika and their Amir, Jibreel. How many, how many of these Malaika? All, only Allah knows the number. A huge, a massive number of Malaika descend on that night. And they, 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 they actually um, sit with the people, they salute and they greet them, they shake hands with them, the, the people, they are people making sujood, people who are engaged in ibadah, and those who are making dua. So they actually search the assemblies of dhikr, malaika, led by Jibreel alayhi salam. Tanazzalu fiha al-malaikatu? Fiha al-ruhu? What is the first? Malaikatu al-ruhu fiha bi idni rabbi. With their Lord permission, min kulli amr, for every matter. The matter that I've just spoken about. And subhanAllah, everyone, this night is not a night to be missed. So with you, with your sincerity, with your passion, and with your consistency, and you ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to help you, ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to give you the, the barakah, the ability, and the tawfiq, and the lack as well, that you're going to be some, somewhere in a, in, 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 in a position, and a time, that you're going to do something which is, inshallah, that will make Allah Azza wa Jalla uh, pleased and happy for you to do this. And this Laylat al-Qadri Ikhwan is, uh, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have mentioned, it is an odd night among the last ten nights of Ramadan. Uh, hadith uh, recorded by Aisha radiallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's hadith sahih. So the, the, the knowledge of Laylat al-Qadr is, is unknown, is unknown, because Rasulullah sallallahu Allah has given him the information about, uh, about what night Laylat al-Qadr is. Yeah, there is a hadith, there is a hadith speaks about, it's a, it's a reference about when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was in his room, when he had the knowledge of that, he was actually, he came out of his room to lead the prayer and to really give a good pe the people the glad tie, the, the good news of Laylat al-Qadr in specific, in, in what night? But unfortunately, two people, they were arguing at the masjid. At the back of the masjid, in the corner of the masjid, it doesn't matter. They, they were, a, 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 there's a dispute of argument. And because of course, he was concerned, and he was so unhappy to see people, to uh, look at people arguing in the place of worship, in the house of Allah Azza wa Jalla, because of him being, 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 being distracted by that, the knowledge of Laylat Qadr be lifted from his mind. It's gone. Why? Because of Allah. And we, we, learn, we learn from this, Ikhwan, it is not worth arguing. It brings nothing but dispute and hatred, disunity and separation. Read Quran instead of arguing. But Rasulullah Sallallahu has given us a clue. A clue in hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, well, actually, whoever wants to, to seek Laylat al-Qadr, so let him seek it in the last, in the, old, uh, the last seven nights and the last, during the last ten days of Ramadan. The last seven nights. Another hadith is even more detailed and more specific. Hadith of Ubad ibn Samit, seek Laylat al-Qadr in the 25th, 27th, 29th of the last ten nights of Ramadan. So we got here more specification and more clues and more information being added to the other information, which is the 25th, the 27th, and the 29th. Some people, some people traditionally, traditionally, a bit of culture, yeah? They prefer what night? Is that right or not? Is that right or wrong? What do you think? It may be 27th, but not for sure. 
not for sure. So to really claim that Layla al Qadr say you're gonna rubbish, you're gonna go against all these references and all these uh, hadith and prophetic information, and we've mentioned the hadith sahih, seek it on the 25th, 27th, 29th, or the last night, or the, the last seven nights, all the hadith, you're gonna go against them, against all of these hadith, which is sahih hadith, and basically, in the first um, information I shared with you about the old night, there is no difference of opinion between scholars regarding the old night. Definitely is not in the 22nd, 24, 26, 28, definitely. So there is no difference of opinion, yeah, among the scholars, yeah, it is quite an anonymous, that it is an odd number. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, is I mean, his heart, is Rahim. He wants to help us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's always like this. So he has given us more clues. Okay, see that more clues on the, the, the last hadith, 25, 27, 29. Among the 10 nights, the old 10 nights. So when I, when I actually uh, uh, spoke about 27, some people do prefer communities and messages that do prefer, I don't know, it's a matter of convenience, it's a matter of, of just what, well, the habit, the tradition, that every year people will look at 27, we're gonna do Habibi. It may be there, it may be not. Nobody know about it. And what is why, which is why people are encouraged to do what? To increase their worship on the last 10 nights of Ramadan with the emphasis, uh, with the more emphasis on what night? Odd night. Does it make sense? So we have, you have to be a warrior, you have to be a worshipper. Ikhwan, you look at the price. It is not something like two, three, four. It's talking about the lifetime price. So even if it's without even these clues of odd night, 27, 20, even without this uh, added details from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam based on, 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 on uh, um, uh, Hassan graded ahadir, uh, if it is just located and hidden on the last 10 nights, we will be even more happy and more actually uh, uh, um, motivated to seek it and really to win this prize. But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is seeking 25, 27, 29. And man qama Ramadan, or man qama whoever performed ibadah on this precious night, all his sins, previous sins, will be forgiven. This is another price, not Laylat al Qadr. Laylat al Qadr, 83 years of accepted, accepted. Ibadah from Allah Azza wa Jalla. When I say Ibadah, yeah, well, let me just open the bracket here. Yeah? Ibadah is not just tasbih, an act of kindness. It's Ibadah on that night. You look at somebody, you have a what? You have grudge, you have a dispute, you have animosity, and you look, look at that person and say, I'm going to forgive that person for the sake of Allah, and I want to put that forward for me to earn Laylat al Qadr. That's, that's Ibadah. Another ibadah, so in Atikaf or in the masjid or in your house, one of the nights you finish Taraweh and you, you go back to your house and you sit in the corner and you just reflect about your life. What have I done last year? I got a list of things that I've done, evil things, bad things, bad habits. And I want to reflect on, on my own destiny. What am I doing? Where, where, where am I heading to? What am I... What should I do to become a good person, a better human being? There's a reflection. That's a ibadah. Taraweeh on that is a ibadah. Meeting people, hugging them, shaking hands with them, smiling to them, like this on that, is an act of worship. Be nice, generous to your family, to your wife, to your community. Put 100 quid, put 50 pounds, put 20 pounds, you give it. Don't, don't, don't let anybody know about it. But your intention is it? you do things to just ask Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah, I'm just doing my bit. You are, the, you are the one. You are the one behind everything. Give me Laylatul Qadr. And you know somebody who lives in New Morden, in Kingston, or in anywhere, anywhere. He's an orphan, a widow, a family in need. And this is something, somebody has given you this. 50, 60 pounds, 10 pounds, just put it in your food. Why the intention is Laylat al Qadr? <coughs> al Ibadah, Allah Azza wa Jalla. Ibadah. Allah didn't mention the Salah, prayer on that night. He didn't mention that. This is a broad meaning. It's open to everybody. So anything that you do, which is, which is from Allah's pleasure, it is an act of worship. Only some of the scholars mentioned that 
on that angels and Jibril, Jibril and the Malaika, when they actually, the, the moment when they came down on earth, if they see people, if they see people bow, prostrating down, Jibril will shake hands with them. And Ibadah, on, on Salah in particular. If, he, if they meet you or you are in sujood, then Jibril will shake hands with them. Will salli on sujood. Because this is the nearest you can be to Allah. So it is night of, uh, of, to put effort. It is night to, uh, to stay up at night. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I said, on the day on the reminders after Isha, he used to tighten, tighten his belt. It is an indication of staying away from his wives, according to uh, in interpretation and tafsir of Imam Ahmad. So he will leave off his wives, okay? There's no wives. So there's no bed of on that ten nights. So why the Prophet will do this is to show us, is to give us an example, this is how Layla al-Qadr should be earned. This is through continuous effort. He would tighten his belt. I said he's there, he's ready. And also he was act, he would stay at night and he would <coughs> awaken his family. A family to witness the good. So he would basically, in some other hadith, he would even exert more effort into bringing the spirituality of that night into his own existence. So there is no left, there is no right. The Prophet even he, in Ramadan, or, or, or when he's in Atikaf, he will just cut off from the world. But in these 10 nights, he will even accelerate and, and gear more, more, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's whom Allah Azza has forgiven all his time sins. There is no sins of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does he really need that much hardship and the much effort of reward? No. But sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's teaching us. He left behind legacies and the way how we should, we should get promotion and we should actually get pleasure from Allah. And guess what? Something that I would like to conclude with. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. Do you know who Aisha? Sahabi al-Jalila. Umm al-Mu'mineen, the Prophet's preferred wife. Okay, he used to love Aisha more. Okay? And he used to sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to establish equality between his wife. He's the Prophet. Well, nobody will teach the Prophet how he should behave with his wives. But he used to like Aisha for some reasons. Okay? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. She was a scholar. She was alima, very pious. She learned tons of ilm from Rasulullah sallallahu And listen to this, an act of humility, an act of consultation, an act of humbleness. She didn't know what to say. She's got a lot of dua in her mind. But she came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ya Rasulullah, if I feel there is like a feeling and I know that there is, uh, there is Laylat al-Qadr, it's, 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 it's going to be on that night. Uh, what shall I say? So again, listen to this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he recommended something for her. And he gave her the best of dua that reflects the love between the Prophet and Aisha. And this is something for us to learn. When your wife will come to you with an advice, you have to be there for her, not just give her any flashing, any passing by advice, you have to give to your wife the best of advice. I like, like, like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When I say the best of advice, it could money, clothes, shelter, it could everything. But do that professionally. We learn from this. Rasulullah did say, Aisha, you know, come on, are you, are you just wasting my time? You know, any dua, you know, you learn that from me. You say, Allah, da, da. he didn't say that. You know what he said? Aisha, if you are serious and making dua on the night of Laylat al-Qadr, do stick with this. And this is something for all of us to, to learn, inshallah. Quli, Allahumma innaka afuun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'afu'anni. And he did not mention, O oh Allah, anta ghafuru, tuhibbul maghfira ta faghfirli. He didn't mention that. He would have said, say maghfira. He said, no, say afu. Now, what is the difference between maghfira and afu? I'd like to conclude with this, inshallah. You know, maghfira ikhwani is for Allah Azza wa Jalla to forgive your sins, but the sin will be still, still, still there in your record, in your book of deeds. So in the day of judgment, you will be given, hopefully you will get your book with the right hand. If it is the left hand, the left hand then, there's no, there's no maghfira, <laughs> you'll be in trouble. So for, 
provided you're going to actually receive your hand, your, your book with the right hand, and you look at it, a sin which has been forgiven but not, not been pardoned is there. The sin is there. Is there maybe two or three, four, I don't know how many sins that Allah has forgiven you, but there were no pardon took place. So the sin is there, so Allah will ask you, so, so, but don't worry, I, for, I forgave you. Allah won't punish you because of that sin. Does it make sense, Yechon? Allah won't punish you because of that. Because what happened, it was forgiven. Pardoning is different. Allah will forgive your sins and he will delete it. He will delete the sin from the record, will delete the sins from your remembrance. When you, the day when you meet Allah, you go, oh, one, two, three, four, qiyam layl, sadaqa, hajj, umrah, zakah, jihad, fi sabirillah, ilm. There's no that sin is gone. You know why? Allah pardoned you. He forgave that sin, and that sin was del deleted completely. Was it not a good advice? Was it not a good du'a from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why? Because he loves his wife. As I said to you, and I want to come back to that again. If you love your wife, you have to be to your wife all the time. Inshallah. So let's, inshallah, make the best of this, uh, the best use of these coming days. Ikhwani, it has never been too late. Wallahi. Till we meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yeah, we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to extend our lifespan so we can witness this coming, inshallah, this these remaining precious nights of Laylatul Qadr, um, ultimately, we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make you and me from among the winners of Laylatul Qadr. Jazakallah uh, khair for listening, inshallah, we open the floor for questions or any um, commentaries on the, related to the topic. Inshallah, bismillah. There are many things that should be said, but because of the length of time, inshallah, I'll give you the opportunity if you have any questions, inshallah, or anybody want to add something that it's not been mentioned in relation to the Laylat al Qadr. That would be greatly appreciated. Sheikh Hassan, you got anything? What's the best action to do in the Qadr? The best action? Okay, it is a list of things. Okay, as long as you are engaged, you are engaged. On these nights, when I see the Prophet will say about night, will be engaged, be involved in Ibadah, so there is no worldly things. So there is no selling, there is no buying, especially if a person is in Etikaf. Okay, especially if a person is in Etikaf, there's no worldly matters being discussed, something to do with the glamours, the glasses of this dunya, wasting time, purchasing and buying and laughing and joking. Excuse me, that's not time to do this. Okay? For all of us, we are not taking, actually, we're not in a seclusion uh, uh, session or on an etikaf. The a'mad, the person will do, alhamdulillah, as a shaykh has a very good question. Dhikr of Allah, azza wa jalla, qiyam al-layl. Especially qiyam layl on your own. Alhamdulillah, there is a qiyam layl in this measure. But do bit of qiyam layl, even watch two on your own. This is where you have time that you can control yourself, the du'a that you will make, and also similar thing that you will do. Tasbih of Allah, azza wa jalla, and the du'a. Qira'at al-Qur'an. So you look at it, you're not going to do something bad. You're not going to actually waste your time with your phone all the time, the chatting group and who's this, who's calling. Forget this, this for now, these days, this night, inshallah. Unless if there is family, family call or something which is necessarily something to do with your job, something to do with the kind of shopping, and some things that you need your phone. Otherwise, there's not time to do this. They learn Quran, they go into tafsir of Quran, so uh, uh, refill and uh, Occupy yourself with something, inshallah, that will earn you a bit of reward of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Not just earn a reward, you also bring that kind of change. When Ramadan, Hamadan goes away, so you build that kind of etiquette and character into your lives. So you are more friendly and more familiar with the Quran. You are more familiar and you're more, alhamdulillah, uh, 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 friendly with, with Allah's word, with tasbih. So you get that, you learn that, inshallah, from the school. That's, this is the reason why, so whenever I speak about Ramadan, I always say the spiritual school. We are on, we are on a course for 30 days. The Eid is coming. And you say you can judge yourself. Have I been a good person? Am I now a good person? I used to smoke, okay? No smoke anymore. I used to watch some dodgy, not anymore. I used to be violent and, 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 and moody and, 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 and I used to be tiny and used to, uh, and, and not anymore. I used to be lazy, uh, I can't come to the masjid, not anymore, alhamdulillah. I'm a different person. Ikhwani, this is the ultimate purpose from Ramadan as, as a meaningful institution and obligation. 
لعلكم تتقون this is why لعلكم تتقون is it's not just the clothes and the beard no who care about that here you have that mashallah is good but I want you also to be to change on the field on the ground you speak good you deal good you treat people nicely you are a harmonious person you are a peaceful man so you are a good person people will look at you and say this is a good man Muslim and the no Muslim. I'm not just asking, talking about Muslims. No Muslims. We've got neighbors. We've got no Muslim neighbors. They are here. They are in our left, left, left and right. Some, some of the ad addresses where I, where I live, I've got a man from Poland. I tell you, oh, may Allah give this man here there. Such a good family. So we have, alhamdulillah, Brother Masoud, the taxi man. You know Brother Masoud? He's, he's my, okay, here. He's on my right. Man from, no, no, subhanAllah. The man from Poland, I say he left. He left because some reason, and we have a man, family from Italy. Allah, oh, Akbar. Very respectful people, very respectful. So, they're not a Muslim, alhamdulillah, there are a few discussions that we had together. Very polite people. When I say very polite people, some of the our Muslim brothers and sisters, goodness me, that politeness and that kindness is not there. When you look at some, not all of them, some of them are bad neighbors, uh, I don't know get into that, but some of them are good neighbors. So to these people, we have a duty, Ikhwa. We have a duty as neighbors, as a community to look after these people and to serve them. You will never know. An act of kindness will open up their heart and ask about your deen. Well, why Ramadan? What is that for Ramadan? I don't know, Ramadan. Are you, are you serious to stay away from food and drink for 60, 70 hours? Are you not hungry? Are you not starving? This is the time, and you sit down and say, I'll tell you what, why we are fasting. You open up discussion with them, and you never know. You, the guidance is not in your hand. But when you are polite and kind and nice, at least you're going to live with, you're going to leave with them in their mind a glimpse of knowledge. Oh, Muslims are doing, oh, they are doing this because they are Lord. Like somebody who's a, I was a discussion, I said, okay, you're Christian, I said, Let you, don't you know in the Old Testament that Isa used to fast 40, 40 days? So Isa is even 40 days, we have 30 days, he used to fast. And the man was, was amazingly astonished. I said, you're Christian, I said, I said, you're Muslim, you know better than I. I said, no, 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 I said, you are better. And I was so happy, I said, that. I said, I don't know you, but when I speak to you, I feel the warmth and love. Well, I always move, subhanAllah, as a man, as a random man I've never met before. But I'm, I'm not going to say I'm a, I'm, I'm a good person. But alhamdulillah, this is the way that conversation, this is the, the fashion, the type, the type of, of conversation. And I, I, it left an impact on that person. He became my friend, mashallah. At the moment, he's a Muslim, I don't know. But whenever we speak, we speak a word of love and kindness. Argue, especially with the people of the book, you argue with them with that which is good. Does that have the question?